to LOA Today. I'm Walt Keeson. With me on the show today, Debbie G and Neo Positivity. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Oh, and I found something new I can't do on the Mac. Okay, well, there we go. Hey, welcome, everybody. <laughs> This has been quite the week. We've been uh, chatting before we got started here, and all the stuff that's going down has just been absolutely nuts. Neo is flying high. I am flying under the radar, and Debbie is just happy to be sounded right now because she was having so much trouble with that. But we're here, and uh, we're doing a, a kind of a special version of the Friday crew on Thursday because of all the, the craziness Debbie went through in December, and she wants to tell us the story. So, Debbie, I'm handing the mic over to you. Da, da, I feel like playing the theme to Rocky right now. Yeah, that's, all right. Well, well we that's should have that's, that's See, what Neo, we need. Neo is our sound effect guy. He's not on the ball here. He's yeah, got to have it ready. <laughs> Rocky. Neo, we need Rocky. I'm going to tell you. But, you know, I swear to you, it's like going down to that last round, and you just know he's going to get back up, right? right? He may have the crap beaten out of him, but he'll be there. <laughs> but he's going to show up, man. <laughs> tell you, you what. amazing, though. Like, you actually look like you're younger than you were before <laughs> you went out. And that's no BS, seriously. Like, look at a video from back then. You're, you're glowing. This is true. It's all working for you. Well, I'm just going to receive that and appreciate that from both of you. <sighs> Man, yeah, it's it, it just good to just be here. That, that, that side pretty much summarized it. That summarized my last four months, too. So you summarized it for both of us. Yep. Yep. I would like I would like to just pause for a second because usually when Debbie stops and thinks, then she gets diarrhea of the mouth and everything just flows out. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful diarrhea. But, just, uh, but the fact that she was just speechless after that. I, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that from her before. So it must have been a, a I hear you. journey and a half. Mm. Well, it's kind of like this. The level of appreciation I have now and the only knowingness that I walked away from was this. The only thing we have is appreciating what we have right now. Mm. Period. Period. Like I've talked about this before, but this, this was the journey. So listen, I, y'all been watching me. I got married and this and that. And then slowly I kept missing shows and I had a surgery like last March or something. And I, I kept feeling like crap and I kept feeling like crap, but it wasn't like I was owning this. I'm feeling like crap. It was more like, I can't deny this. Like I can't drink enough caffeine. I can't, I, I something's up. It was affecting my mental health, my spiritual health, my physical health. Everything was being affected. Now I'm thinking, okay, I'm almost, well, I am 55 right now, but I'm thinking to myself, this can't be getting 55. That's bullshit. No, this cannot be. So I'm going to preface this with, if you've ever had something going on with you and you're certain you have something going on with you and you're not being a hypochondriac or any of that, like you have a gut knowing something's up, do not stop until that you find out what's going on with you. There are certain times that I am absolutely 100% pro the medical field because they do help get to some serious matters like with what I had. Sure. All right. So I keep thinking something's wrong. So I go see a doctor and check, oh, it's got to be hormones, bioidentical hormones. Here we go down that freaking rabbit hole. Well, that's helping a little bit, but I'm still, okay, guys, listen, I'm going to just take a minute. We're all going to say thank you to Joe because... Look, the dude stuck it out with me. There were some moments you guys got to know. Not only was Debbie Gratitude not present, but I turned, I literally don't know who I was. Like I was like a B.I. Uh, I was like hell a bitch. Like just, and I was thinking, I know there's God, there is something. Everything about me was not me. So mm. it wasn't the hormones. <laughs> Still, I'm like, what the hell? So then it was down this rabbit hole of I need iron. So, okay, maybe that's why I'm feeling so horrible. That's going to make me fucking mental and want to absolutely just be like, ah, no, that's not it. So I'm still like, what the hell is go going on? And my doctor says, my, my hematologist, she's like, your calcium's too high. 
And I'm like, huh? Oh, well, let's just watch it another month. Still too high. So what they determined was that I had this little tumor and this little tumor was called a parathyroid tumor. And I, they went in right here and took it out. That's, and, and I'm making it sound super easy peasy lemon squeezy. When I look back on this, I am so grateful. I've done a lot of my work, but dear God, did I get to face some demons? I didn't even know we're still in there. Mm. Seeing triggers, seeing for what they were, but this whole time thinking something's wrong with me. Now here, now I'm going to go back and here's a kick in the butt. So I went through a little bit of victim. Wah, wah. I needed a ambulance a little bit, you guys. Let me tell you why. So in order for me to have had this thing going on, they, it had to have been going on for a long time. Okay. A long time. It affected my mental health. It affected my bones. So right now I'm having to rebuild my bones because they've been, they, the calcium, this thing just kept sucking all the calcium out and putting it into my bloodstream because my bloodstream, because it was not regulating me. It was crazy. <laughs> I mean, it was absolutely nuts. You would not think that a little thing like calcium could mess your shit up so bad, but oh, it yeah. meant, oh, it raised my, listen to this. It, it, it causes damage to the kidneys, the heart, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, just, it can do a lot of stuff, you guys. So I'm, I'm really grateful that one, they found it when they did and two, that it didn't hit my kidneys before they found it. There's some things that could have happened that mm. would have been a hell of a lot worse. But the, the, the thing that I really walked away from was that how much time did I spend beating the shit out of myself because I wasn't straight? Well, got to give yourself a little little slack on that because, I mean, you're in well, the midst of something that's just pretty severe. I mean, yeah, I, that's going to happen. We're human beings. Well, yeah, but but go with me on this because, look, this is what's – this is some real shit. Like, I literally was like, what's wrong, what's wrong with me or this and that. I went to four endocrinologists to get one to listen, and I said, listen – Dr. Sharu said, you have to test me for this and this and that. And that's what you're going to do. Like, <laughs> like that was my, my last one. Mm. I was like, I went to four. I refused. I did not give up. But the whole time I'm like, knowing that I know my true authentic self and I'm not able to be my true authentic self. And I'm like, uh, this sucks. Like there were some times when I was just sitting there going, really? Like I could hold it together with y'all for a short bit of time, but that's all the energy I had. I'd get off of these shows and I would be flatlined. It would take everything I had mm. all the time. It wasn't, but I, it, it, it just can't explain it. The, the, the idea that something so small, something so little could create such havoc. It, it was incredible. Yeah. And there's a, I, I kept thinking, I'm what? Okay. If I'm dying, just let just Jesus Christ, man, stop. Just, 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 it was the, it was the opposite of me. It was like having, do, you know, Dr. Jekyll, mm -hmm. and Mr. Hyde, mm -hmm. which one was which? Hyde was the monster. Okay. So there was a Debbie G. Hyde. It was a Debbie G. Hyde. I swear to God. It was, I don't, there were moments when I couldn't, I didn't know who I was. Like I literally, you guys, it was and this is where I went down this rabbit hole to really look at this and say, but I'm still here and I'm still breathing. Mm -hmm. And that was the best I could have done apparently at the time. But there was nothing that messed with my mental health as much as this idea that I kept losing control of my anger. Mm -hmm. I literally, because of my blood pressure that, it causes your blood pressure to go sky high. And all of a sudden I suddenly had this insane blood pressure. So I was physically, I had a bunch of stuff, but what it did mentally was really take, it was a really hardcore look at slowing down. Breathing. There's been times I could not even, I was so upset. I couldn't breathe over nothing. Wow. Over nothing. I swear to God. Miscommunicator, Miss G Viber, Miss Gratitude, Miss Everything went out the window and in came the hide. And 
I just was not, I, I can't explain it. There, there just wasn't words for it. So the moral of the story was that every day I had to work really, 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 really hard on nurturing myself and being okay with laying in bed for three hours because I just didn't feel like getting up and doing anything else. And because I had this rule, okay, the rule used to be, if I say I don't feel like it, I'm going to do it because that's the rule. Mm -hmm. If you say you don't feel like it, that you're, you're out, you're, you're doing whatever that was that you said you don't feel like doing. Well, I got to the point where I couldn't even do the thing that I wanted to, I couldn't anyway. I, I couldn't, I couldn't get myself up off the bed. That's why they thought that the, the iron was going to solve everything. It I'm telling y'all just, it's amazing. Uh, what messes with our mental health and what doesn't? Oh yeah. I, I want to ask you two questions. How often was Hyde present? Was it like he turned on at two in the afternoon and was there for the rest of the day or did he come in waves? Oh, towards the end there, it was just about daily. It was just constant. Just, and no, it wouldn't come in waves. It was just, woke I, up Hyde. I pissed, woke up pissed off and stayed pissed off. Woke up feeling so, I wake up feeling like such crap. Now, I kept telling Joe. It's not personal. I'm telling you, this shit's not personal. And I could be a real shithead. So, you know, Hyde, Hyde could be, y'all, look, you know, I'm tough and strong and I've been through some stuff. So I, I have a tendency to be pretty strong, pretty mouthy. Anyway, um, I'm trying to say it nicely. I just say what I mean. <laughs> I just say things. You do. <laughs> yeah. Well, in this particular case, no, it would just be, when I look back at it now, what I know, I did not know how bad I was feeling. Wow. Every That's day, really every day, right? Every day since surgery on December 9th, I wake up feeling better than I did the day before. But Hyde was present. Stupid shit too. Well, when you're, when you're going through that kind of progression, it, it's frustrating and exhilarating at the same time because you know you're getting better. But you're not there yet. Yeah. Mm. So. Mm. And, and that's, fr I mean, it, it, it's like a, a carrot's being dangled just outside of your reach. You can't have it yet. What were the thoughts in my head when you were, when I was angry? I was so hardcore, my victim, Jeffrey. What a great question. I was hardcore. And I was pissed off, feeling sorry for myself. I couldn't, the feelings were like I just wanted out of my body. I was so angry. I wanted out of my body. I didn't want to be there. I, I just was just like, just. Yeah, there comes, is, uh, tell me if this is what you're talking about, because there comes a point where you're just in so much pain for so long, where you're just right. like, I don't even want to be here no more. Yeah. Snap a doodle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's... Oh yeah. There was just like, there were many mornings I woke up and went, Oh gee, I'm still here. Fucking a. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, just to be honest with y'all, it's like the feelings that it, the, the thoughts in my head, it was more like what I was feeling in my body, Jeffrey. It was my nervous system on fire. It was my nervous system screaming. What I'm going to promise you all, everything that we have going on with us is in our nervous system. Mm -hmm. Our, our inability to regulate our own nervous system. And I was so out of whack. And I'm telling you, everything was on fire in my body. It was like, like it was just being in an, an infernal hell, you know, and I, I think that I did a good job for what I had. I just, I don't know. It is what it is. I can't change anything, but I will tell you that it, it's humbling. It's humbling. No, it's, like, I, it's like all the, the alarms in your body were ringing at the same time and you couldn't shut them off. Oh yeah. Everything was going off. Yeah. <laughs> It was like I was, it was like, you know what? I was like a misfire. Hmm. Just a misfire. Period. And I know how to do, look, I know how to say what my needs are to a human being and my values and, and I would believe me. He, I, I, there's other people that I bit their head off to, including my own. Well, you know what? That brings me to my second question. Uh, you have a 
box of chocolates on its way to your house. On behalf of Hyde, can you cross your name out and put Joe's name on there for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? So Jeffrey wants to know, did I get a chance to get out somewhere and yell and scream and cry and let it? Yeah. Yeah. I t- oh, Jeffrey, I'm, I'm one of those that when I'm really pissed or when I'm feeling that way, and I don't know why this is, but I'll just blare some metal, some good old Pantera, something we're just hardcore Volbeat, something that's just and and I literally will feel better afterwards. It's really bizarre, but I am screaming with it, you know. And, and what you're asking is right because did I push this stuff out of my body? Did I get that angst out? Yeah, it, that's a really good question. Most of the time, I would say. Uh, yeah, because I was yelling and hopping and mad. and But I think I was just mad at the world. I don't think I was mad at anything in particular. I think I was just pissed that I wasn't 100% well. And and it, it was unfortunate because then people in my path, you know, I don't know. It's a new it's a new level of humbling when when you're sick, you don't know how you don't know what's wrong. And it's affecting your, affecting your mental health. And you so desperately don't want to be that way. And then you want your spouse to be understanding at the same time. So, you know, it, 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 it's a big growth for him too, obviously. But yeah, it was a, it was an interesting spot. Now, I, want to, I want to put something on top of that. When you're dealing with the law of attraction, you know, you can't be mad at somebody because that's going to produce more mad moments. Yeah. And, and when you, it's not a person, when it's the universe, you you know you really don't want to be mad at the universe because that's going to screw up your future even more. So when you're in that situation and you're in like that pain and you're pissed, but you know you shouldn't be pissed, and it's a constant struggle. Mm. It's like when your grandma's in the hospital and you're trying to be positive, and, and the what ifs just keep popping up. So to be in that battle for a long time, you know, it's just it's just a crappy thing. But you know the rules of the game. Oh, the rules of yeah. Play. I am in so much gratitude for all of it right now. I literally, you don't know, the ba- the baths that I would soak in for three hours. I would take a bath three hours. I would just keep filling hot water in because I needed to be in water. The water was helping me a lot and the Epsom salt stuff too. But I had to, I had to take self-care to a level that I can't even quite explain. I remember there were days I was in so much pain. I would go to get a massage just at the mall, you know, where you sit down and they would just do just your shoulders and stuff. Cause I was just like anything and everything I could find that was self care. The reason I kept searching, it wasn't that I wanted something to be wrong with me. It didn't, I wasn't calling it. I want to be clear. I knew something was up from the beginning and I knew they weren't finding it. And I knew that it was, and this is a rare disease. It's it's not a common disease. And when I say parathyroid, I thought they meant my thyroid. Mm-hmm. No, it's your parathyroid behind it and had nothing to do with that. It has to do with your calcium and, and other things. So all I know is that life, we're really, every ounce of our day is as precious as, as it can be there isn't there isn't going to ever be a w-i-n and win just isn't gonna happen you know and i remember when i when all of this was happening and i was like whatever and i and well i'm just and i would hear these words i'm just waiting till when and i would be like super triggered like I have to do, I have to be okay now. I have to be okay now. And I fought with myself to be okay now when I couldn't be okay now, even though I should have been okay now, but I couldn't should have all over myself. So it was just a giant uh, circle of shit. You know, my head was just like, it was crazy. I just have something so small. I just keep saying that it was just a little tumor, non-cancerous. That's it. But it gets your attention in a big way, like you're describing here, and it's surprising. That's what you're really telling us. It, it, it's amazing how big a problem a little thing like that can cause. It also shows that there's really no such thing as little things. Everything's big. <laughs> Everything's important. Everything plays an important role. You bet. And, and it's also reminding me, too, uh, we had David Strickle on yesterday, 
And uh, David was talking about what he's been going through. Uh, he and his uh, spouse lost their home three days after they finished decorating. <laughs> I can't yep. believe that. Um, so they went through that, and and his, his uh, spouse lost his mom and his dad within a short period of time. Uh, in fact, the mom was associated with a fire that destroyed the, the house. That's part of how she passed. Um, I was talking about that, what I've been going through with the divorce, which finalized this past weekend and all the stuff associated with that. Sam was on that, Sam Page. He was talking about how he lost his mom and, and the effects from that. And, and what it all came down to is as much as we study Taya or other practices, no matter, no matter what we're doing to work on ourselves, we're still living in a world of polarity and it's going to get us. It's just going to get us. And, and I think what happens in every single case is we get stronger dealing with the craziness. So you went through all this craziness. I went through mine. David went through his. Sam went through his. And we came out stronger at the other, at the other side. Well, and, here's, and, now we've got, and now we got stuff we can share with people, which is what you're doing totally. here. Well, I, all right. I want you all to take this into perspective. And I told you about the shitty part and the mental health and all this. And all the meanwhile, all the meanwhile, I, I'm buying a house in Colorado, which is where I'm at now. And we're, Joe's retiring and we're moving and all these massive life changes are happening. Mm. So let's talk about, I'm going to share something. I want to share something really super personal. I want you guys to hear something. If this had been 15 years ago, I would have lost my shit. Mm. I would have been, I would have said, oh, let me see if I can drink enough to kill myself. Or some stupid ass crap that, you know. My decision, my ability to make decisions that were better for me were not as present as they are today. And even though I went through all of that, I still had enough worthiness inside of me to know that I'm worthy and deserving. I knew the whole time this wasn't me. My connection to source was even affected. Like my at one minute, my, my channel. Sure. Oh my God, you guys, my channel's completely wide open again. Ping! Which is completely <laughs> awesome. And, um. Physical pain will do that. Oh. Seriously. So. I'm just really, really grateful today because dear golly, it, there is not any words to, to, to go. It was like your computer's offline and you're trying to do all this stuff and get onto this website and that website and all these other websites and you can't figure out why your why your computer's offline and you reset that sucker so many times and you've done a reset, a reset, a reset, no and a mental reset and you're like it's still not on because it needed a new part or a part ticket or whatever. So you guys AOL online first came I swear seriously. So I, it was, this is the difference between being online and offline completely. And I, and I love that Jeffrey says to source or does source preside unconditional love and forgiveness. Yes. You can be angry. We still love you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. I, absolutely. I agree. And there were uh, lots of hard times. Yep. Grace. I think the word grace is good. Grace. Grace, grace comes when I stop and I smell the, just the, the scent of the air and I let it permeate in my bones and my body. Grace is remember, is that you're still here. You're still here. Grace is, is. And I like what Laura, I like what Laura put next to it when she said, good luck and, and grace to all things happen. The two go together. Things happen. Yeah. Things happen and grace, they go together. Yeah. Things could be exchanged for another word. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> I really thought that that was great. And then Jeffrey says, has anyone ever created a safe space for grief and loss? And I, I really think that that's beautiful. Um, I think we all do actually. Grief and loss. I'm an avoider. Uh, so yeah, dis disassociative avoidant. It, it, it can be a real havoc on us. You know, now you know why we're avoidance, right? I'm more of everything happens for a reason. Like that's yeah. how I'm able to avoid it and move and try to move. <laughs> <laughs> I like your term. I like the way you term that. You know, grief. I Jessica Alstrom, 
said one time is, and I love this, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to rephrase this the same exact way, but she said that grief was un, unhoused love. Hmm, that's love, a love with nowhere to go. Hmm. Grief is just that love that it needs to find love that needs to find a new home. And if you think about it, when the things that we've grieved, that soon it shifts, it shifts and something comes in not to replace, but to remind us of our hearts again, to bring forward that space to, to remind us of our innate divine, divine beingness that we all are. If anything comes from being sick is to remember that all we are is human, but the divinity within us is all the time, all the time, all the time. It's never not all the time. Yeah, before us and after. You know, gr grief and loss is grief is just, dear God, you can't have grief unless you've had great love. It's impossible. True. It makes sense because it's like lack of something, be it your health or a loved one. The love is looking to go, but that essence, that being, whatever it is, is gone at the moment. And it's like, so yeah, I like the way, you, I like that. That makes a lot of sense. So the space to hold for grief is the space of love and to appreciate, appreciate the tears that it brings. Appreciate the, look, you're here to feel. And we spend our fucking lifetime trying to avoid it. Now let's stop our shit. <laughs> All right, because this is just getting ridiculous. And that's what I promise you. We are here to feel. We are here to feel our hearts cry sometimes. And we're here to feel our hearts be squeezed sometimes because the love is so, so big, so big, huge. That's why we're here. We're not here to play a bunch of bullshit games anymore. It's to remember who you are and to take total advantage of that. Be the magic you are. Within grief and losses, grief and losses creating the space for the magic. And and who was it that said that that all magic is created in chaos? Mm -hmm. Because we're all when we're in chaos, we're solving, we're creating. And when we're solving and creating, that means that magic is happening, period. Period. We just if, if we quit judging the shit out of ourselves and it. Tell you what. Good luck with that one. No, I'm for real right now. Listen, we have to quit this. We are literally, I just went through, God, I just want to just download it right into your brains right now. Neener, neener, <laughs> neener, neener. I promise you this, this pure acceptance of self. If, if you want to continue to play it, you can continue to play it. But the fact of the matter is, is that we all deserve to realize we are it. Nothing to play. We, acceptance. I, I love this. Jeffrey, how can you show up for each other? You just did. Just now, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just like what you just did, Jeffrey. How do we show up with our, with our whole heart? with an authentic heart, with intentions that are literally pure. That means that I'm doing this because you need me. All right. I'm right here. Do I, and no, there's no thought in my head going, I wonder how this is going to play out. I wonder if we're going to do business together. I wonder how much money we're going to make by this collaboration. Bada, 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 bing, bada, boom. I'm talking about pure intention. Like when you, somebody needs you and you just show up because you can, because you choose to, it's not that we all can, but, yeah, this pure acceptance, this idea that you judge, we judge ourselves or anything else. So, such bullshit. We were taught that crap. What's up? We're taught that crap. Neo, tell me something. How do you not, you know this so well. You were taught this shit. You know what I mean? Right? What were we taught growing up? I'm 55 years old, you know? Oh, all the BS? <laughs> There's not enough show for that, I don't think. <laughs> Everything was BS. Every aspect of every subject was BS. And I can't even blame my parents for that because they was taught the BS. Yeah. And it was drilled into the head to the point where they believed it. 
but something was up with my generation because we were all like, no, that just doesn't add up to me. Okay. So I have to back you on that because, okay, so you're, I'm quite a bit older than you. And what I'm going to tell you is, yeah, but no, but, but listen, listen, it is your generation. I, 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 I watch you guys and mesmerized by you. It's the, it's the freaking hundredth monkey. It's not us teaching you. It's you guys teaching us and like, no, we're not going to do that shit. Will you, what, what, why did you accept that crap? I mean, you know, <laughs> see, he's like, you know, he's like, that doesn't even make sense to me, you know, and that's, but it's the truth. It's the hundredth monkey effect. You know, oh, what? it just made me think it has something to do with respecting authority too. Like, I don't care who you are, what you just said doesn't make sense so mm -hmm. i'm just gonna kind of disrespect you by not believing you and going off and finding out for myself and so it kind of has a thing to do with that like my my dad went to school if he thought out of line in school or at home you know he was getting his butt whipped um and i you know i guess for me it was different you know i still got my butt whipped but not because of my opinion it was because of my homework <laughs> 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 I, I think what is happening here is we're describing what happens as a society, as a culture, as more and more people move away from that judgmentalism you were talking about, Debbie, and move toward acceptance and then ultimately toward appreciation. Because that's really what where we're, we're all aiming toward and that's where we're all heading toward. Even those of us who know nothing about law of attraction or energy or any of that kind of stuff, even the people who seem to be so stuck in the matrix, they're moving as well. They may not know it. But they are moving as well away from the judgment slowly, ever so slowly, but they're moving away from the judgment and toward the acceptance and the appreciation. And that journey is where we experience these aha moments like, wow, I can't believe how stuck I was. I can't believe that, I, you know, that one little thing can cause that much pain for me. I can't believe that it took me so long to get myself back, but that's part of that journey. It's part of the journey of, of learning how to do that, how to make that shift away from the judgment toward the acceptance until we reach the appreciation. Oh, thank you. What I just heard you say is what I am so deeply in gratitude for right now. Because I'm, you have to know, you you know, it reminds me of the words from uh, a song, and I'm going to look it up. Neo is also busting at the seams on this one, too. <laughs> Yeah, I just, when I look at people, everybody... By the way, Neil, I, I, got, I got to interrupt you for a second. We're having a little trouble leaning a little bit more on the mic so we can pick up your sound a little bit better. There we go. Let me get in on this. There you go. Um, the world is becoming more spiritual. We see that. More open to these mm -hmm. thought thinkers and all that other stuff. Accepting and not judging is still one of the biggest. Oh, examples. yeah. Um, and as long as high school's around, I don't think that's going to change. You know, <laughs> people are getting picked on. Who's wearing Dude, I, look at, I, it's, they're still in high school and I'm 55. What's up? That's, There's, that's why I hate when people say that's high school shit. Cause I'm like, dude, every job I've ever had, especially with the police department was that high school shit. That's called that's true. shit. Mm -hmm. um, big time. We just did not it. We didn't know how Damn, to handle it. I wanted to ask you. What's up? In the past two months, well, let's say November and December, I know you're a beach girl. California, close to the water is where your heart is, and you're not there now. Were you able to get out there? And if you did, what kind of relief did you find? So it was just a matter of I needed to drive because we were still there. Uh, it was just driving by the ocean even, um, taking the puppy down to the sand watching my dogs in the sand. I think, I think my puppy was a, a big, huge help. You know, he's so sweet. I, I think that the ocean just brings me. Yeah. I am. I'm a mermaid, man. I tell you, I, I love this house and we are working hard to open our hip camp by, by May 1st. And Ooh. yeah, so we, we're going to get some things done, but, I brought these words up to a song and I'm going to share them with you guys because I got to tell you, and this is by, it's from 6am, which is, uh, 6am is uh, Nikki six from Motley Crue. Well, he has a band called 6am 
This came out a few years ago. It's called Life is Beautiful. It says, "Can't here's check this out. You can't quit until you try. You can't live until you die. You can't learn to tell the truth until you learn to lie. Hmm. You can't breathe until you choke. Gotta laugh when you're the joke. There's nothing like a funeral to make you feel alive. Just open your eyes and see that life is beautiful. That's appreciating contrast, appreciating polarity. Yeah, and I'm just, you know, y'all you, need to you, you just seriously, really take a take a gander at this song. It's actually got a really good beat, too. It's kind of, it's not too heavy, if anybody doesn't like rock and roll. What's but, it called? 6 a.m.? 6 a, it's 6 a.m. is the group, S-I-X-X a.m. And then the song is called Life is Beautiful. I was waiting for my hearse. What came next was so much worse. It was a funeral to make me feel alive. Just open your eyes and see that life is beautiful. And I bring this up because it is about the appreciation of contrast. And the song, it struck me the very first time I ever heard it. And I'm like, but it's the truth. You can't learn to tell the truth until you've learned a lie. Because now we're making a cognitive choice to now tell the truth. But how did we learn to do that? Every single solitary thing that's ever happened to us has happened for us, not to us. And it is to be used to your advantage. The very thing anybody is sitting there right now thinking, this isn't working for me. Da, 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 da. You're right. It's not working for you because you're saying that. But here's the second part. How could it work for you? That's all. Figure it out. Don't don't piss a fit about it anymore. How can it work? Period. No more excuses. Just ask yourself that. And that's the big challenge when we are in the midst of chaos and crisis. When we're in the midst of facing a condition that nobody else can seem to diagnose and we're feeling worse and worse every day and we're spending three hours and the only water that we can get to, which is bath water and, and just trying everything we can to do self care. And it still isn't enough. That's when it's hardest to do it, but that's also when we're called to do it. Yeah. But that's, you know what, uh, that contrast, I am alive still right now. Holy shit balls. Mm. I just lived through that. Yeah. I can't fathom it. It's like, I thought I loved life and I thought I loved me before. And now I'm sitting back like, wow. And I turned 55 and I was like, I wore angel wings with blinky lights. <laughs> because I was actually still here. And uh not only, but I'm thriving and I'm not in another space. And it was in, it was just awesome. But isn't it, isn't it amazing how life, when, when life does deal the crap to us, it deals exactly the amount of crap we can handle. Isn't that amazing? Well, yeah, I'm dishing it. I'm just like, I created all this shit. Oh, this is yeah, right. Cool. I just, <laughs> dude. Sure, well, it deals the amount of crap that you need because you can handle more. You know? Well, you, you learn to handle more over time. That, that, that's part of the expansionary self. We, we, we are each time. I mean, the, the crisis I've been going through was probably five times worse than the one I went through some eight years ago. But that one from eight years ago set me up so that I could handle this one that came along this time. And whatever the next one is, this one is going to set me up to be able to handle that one. That's where the growth pattern happens. Got to learn from it, which means you yeah. got to be open to learning. Yeah. Which is a huge problem. It is. It's a challenge. Oh, uh, you guys. I'm going to tell you. I, I also have another confession. It's a confetti. So I was so proud of myself for all those years I was single. <laughs> Look at me. I'm a badass relationship coach. I'm a, I am like the communication queen and I am. However, let me tell you what I got to tell. I got to tattle on myself because, and this is so beautiful because I wasn't in one. Of course I was great with them. Of course. Of course. Now I'm still, 
but I will tell you, my tools are coming back and it feels so good to be able to say, this is the, this is what's going on for me right now. And this is what's coming up for me. And I need, you know, to express a need and a value and all that, but I'm going to promise you, oh God, it is definitely, I just want to make sure that everybody, whoever, who I've ever said, oh, it's just relationships are easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And I'm just saying, like, I, I have to, those tools are handy, but man, when you're single, shit is easy. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> well, listen, I don't know. I got to tell you, there's this deep appreciation for both sides. Sure. Just saying. Well, that, but that's the essence of appreciation, though. Appreciation is appreciating that which you like and that which you don't like. That's both sides. Uh, yeah. That takes some real grown up shit, man. It does. Oh, my. Well, you know what? That's like, I think that's what I was pissed about the most is I had to grow up and I'm like, you know, I have to do these things. I can't just be, I can't just be my, the self that I was. I could be the self that I was, but I want even more for, for this experience in this lifetime. Cause here's what I'm certain of that somebody out there is not feeling themselves feeling like, you know, literally a really bad commercial, <laughs> you know, life sucks, you know, days of our lives, everything's dry. <laughs> you know, this is the days of our lives. It's that kind of thing. And what I have to say is, stop that shit. Stop. I, earlier you said something, Debbie. What? I wanted to. I wanted to get this from both of you guys. Uh, you said some demons came back up that you didn't even know were still there. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and my question is, are demons ever really gone? Because as long as you can remember that incident, that time, that lifestyle, whatever it is. It's still a memory. You may take it differently, but pain has a way of stripping away everything we learned in the last 40 years and putting us back in a 10-year-old body of complaining, wah, wah, which means, guess what? Now you're facing the demons with that 16-year-old mindset or whatever. So are they ever really gone? Here's what I want to say to this, and I want to tell you, I want to try neuro-linguistic programming. I do it. And I want to also try uh, some other neuro uh, calming techniques. And I want to get back to you on that answer. And the reason is because what I realized is that everything that came up, came up in my nervous system. Every time, every time it was coming up, like every time I would get, I am not an anxious person. And it, it would just, I am really worked hard on being chill and good and life is going with the timing is what it is like that kind of attitude. So I think it's the nervous system. There's a, there's something about our nervous systems that are affecting us completely all the way around. And, and there are ways to control it. And I know breath is one of the techniques, but I don't believe that breath is breath being of course our first, but I, I want to try some other stuff and I want to see, how how much can we shift the perspective of what the, we thought was there to harm us is seeing it as being for our good, including including childhood sexual abuse? I'd say one hundred and seventy nine percent. I'm going to say that that's that's I'm going to agree with that. And if you can turn any trauma, which to me that is the biggest trauma that there is, uh, rape, anything that violates another body. So if we can turn that around, you know, and Jeffrey wants to know, can we turn demons to angels? I don't, I don't know if they want to be. I don't know that we can turn anything to anything, but I think that we can deal with our own. Sh Find a way to deal with them. Or just, you know, when I'm feeling my little devil self, just decorate my horns. I'm not sure. But if, I mean, like you said, Debbie, if your demon is, uh, you know, sexual assault, you're not, nobody's going to turn that into an angel. Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, it, it is when we're willing to talk about it and not shove it under the rug. And regardless of if uh, our parents wanting to ever speak to us again or not, 
because there's other people out there who are still afraid and in fear and have never talked about it. And so the angel here is the willingness to turn that for others good instead of letting it be a suffering point for my uh, ill will, ill health, you know, be, be that for others, just show up, you know, use experience. If we can use these experiences that hurt us and show other people that you live through it, that's their hope. That's their like saving grace. Like, oh, okay, wait a minute. She lived through it and she said it kind of sucked, but she lived through it. Hey, he lived through it. He's here. He's here. She's still breathing. Walt's well, still here. He's still doing it. Neil, you're still here. And then you've seen some shit in this world. Dear God, I know I can, I, my, my channel is so open right now and it's a trip because mm -hmm. I can see, I can see things with both of you. You know, I can see your hearts right now. This is what's important right here, right now, for the people that are listening, you two showing up as an inspiration and me showing up as an inspiration. We're all still breathing. Even though at some time, at some point we felt like maybe it didn't feel good to do that. Breathe. That is. That's true. That, that uh, definitely happens. Oh, and laughter. I want to say something about laughter. Laughter. We don't laugh enough. We're not playing enough. Can't say enough about laughter. I have swings. I have swings on my property. I have a swing set, so I swing on my property. Yeah. I got one swing, but it's pure anxiety because I tied the rope myself. And... <laughs> 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 I literally can't enjoy the thing. Uh, but yes, laughter. Oh my goodness, comedy. They have this thing uh, where you just laugh for 60 seconds in the morning. It gets extremely silly at eight seconds, but once you push through, you're actually laughing at 18 seconds. So you, but you, it sets the tone for the day. And let me tell you something. I've preached about intention for so long. Because intention's everything. <laughs> but I, I, when I, I have really, really been going into things with an intention with the last seven days and hitting my mark on a daily basis. To the That's nice. It's like, yo, why didn't I do this last month? I've been talking about it forever, you know. And I, you know, I wake up and I have my intentions, but I am not specifically saying this is going to happen at this time, you know, or not that it's this time, but I, and I don't do that because the times that I've done it in the past, it was I'm signing a million dollar deal today, and then I didn't. And so every time I've said that, it was kind of a letdown, which made me not want to do that exercise anymore, as opposed to choosing a smaller goal a more realistic outcome from that phone call, that meeting. And uh, I've been hitting my mark like the sniper I am. Oh, my goodness. Matter of fact, it's a beautiful I'm thing. let you guys go. I have a really important phone call. 50,000-person text message subscriber list. Go get it. Go for it. Flip it a, a step later so it doesn't get lost in text message. They're building an, a portion of their app. It costs $14,000 just for a notification. My <laughs> notification to pop up on 50,000 people's screen with a daily affirmation, just some kind of inspirational message. So I'm going to knock that out. I'm going to do that right now. I love you guys. Happy to have you back, Debbie. Thank I'm you. Always happy to have you. And uh, I'll see you in a little bit. All right. Later. Hit out of the park, Neil. Pew! That's all I do, baby. <laughs> <laughs> when, we're, when we were talking about uh, demons before, I wanted to throw in a, my two cents about that because as soon as I saw the word on screen and then heard you using it, I, I found myself doing one of my favorite exercises, which, which I was glad I was doing because I often don't do it, but I was doing it in this case. And the exercise is how can I flip it around? What can I flip it to? And as yeah. I asked myself that question, I realized it's about finding a way to love the demons, even though we don't love the demons. I mean, Neil was talking about you, you'll never love anybody. You'll never, you'll never love, you know, being sexually assaulted. You'll never love any of that kind of stuff. And that's true enough. But by the same token, we need to find a way to love it, which is such a, an inherent contradiction on the surface. But nevertheless, that's where we need to get to. Well, it's easy to love if, and I have at this point in my life, and I love what you're saying. When we get to that point where you love it, and the love it part is really the person who hears me who knows that, you know what? I'm still here. And if I, if I made it through this life and I'm like a cat, 
Like I've had a lot of lives. <laughs> I'm like on seven at this point. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> seven. Okay. <laughs> I, I've got to be, it's got to be, but like seven right now. But if I, I'm, it's like just this knowing, like I realize those times you want to give up and those times you don't want to do it, but there's all those times that you want to do that for all those times that you do want to do it. We're never going to have a life that isn't going up and down because contrast is why we're here. We're here right. to, we're here to feel, but there's also this thing about the nervous system and laughter. Okay. Laughter sh- like shakes off any of the anxiety. You can't be in anxiety and laughing. It just, you know, if a baby's crying and they start laughing and then they get over the they, laughter takes over. It does. Yeah. I think it's what alters the, the nervous system, but now I'm on this whole trajectory of how I can take control of my nervous system. And I think this coining a term of angels or demons is interesting. It just gives us, it gives us a, a do and a don't kind of a thing, but to make <laughs> friends, but as you were asking the question to make friends with the demon, the perceived, the perception of the demon. Well, it's kind of like this. I don't think there's any bad people. I think there's a whole lot of bad actions. And I think that, that truly that in each individual case that, uh, that person is from source, no matter what. And I realized, yeah, I mean that about everything and everyone, including the most horrific, uh, acts in this world as, as much as it makes our heart sad to know that anybody had to be hurt. The fact of the matter is, is that we don't like the behavior or the actions, but is it true that there's, I just don't believe that there's really such a thing as uh, a bad human versus a really bad behavior. I, I hear you entirely on that. In fact, uh, it reminds me there, there was, uh, are you on the Abraham Hicks email list? Um, I don't know. I, I am. I, I've been getting that for a few years now and I'm pretty sure today's email hit this topic exactly on the, on the head. And I'm not sure if I can find it quickly, but even if I can't, I'm pretty sure I can remember the gist of it. The gist of it was that, uh, I think it was, uh, Abraham speaking and talking about what was going on in Esther's life and how Esther had seen, uh, a bird in her yard being attacked by the cat. And mm-hmm. Esther responded, bad cat. And the cat in his own head was saying, mm, good bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I just, oh my God, that's funny. But yeah, that's kind of it's like that. perspective, right? It, how much can we, are we willing to ask the, the why? Ask yourself that just the why question to everything. Why, 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 why? Why do you think two year olds ask the question? Because they're still in this um, enormous awe over life. Curiosity is going to be everybody's key to gaining complete and total acceptance to complete and total appreciation. If we understand the demon, do we take away its power over us? Well, Jeffrey, it's been my experience and my experience only. So it's all I can share about that. The demon is only as big as you want to make it, that it was actually probably, it's probably, you've always had the power over it, period. It's, yes. Well, let me give you a demon. I used to smoke cigarettes, right? And I took my power back because I decided I no longer needed them. I mean, it took me a while and I had to do some NLP and some, some, even though I was smoking, I had to break up with the cigarettes. I had to do like this mind thing. And I was like smoking going, you know, we're not good for each other anymore. Right. You know that. And I appreciate all the times you've shown up for me because that's all that that is. It's just whatever it is that you need to show up for you externally, because that's what you need right now. But I had to break up with that. And the power was in me taking my power back, period. I didn't need to worry about what the demon was going to do because it was no longer present in my experience and I still don't smoke. So yay. Which is a wonderful thing. And it shows exactly how you got there too. Just that little description, it becomes clear how, how you shifted away from that. Yeah, that's exactly how I did it. I broke up with them. I, yeah. we were good. Yeah. We totally were good for each other. And like, we had to come to terms with that, but you know, Hey, <laughs> 
Uh, and I don't sense any regret either. It sounds like, yeah, this is, I like that choice. Yeah. Um, yeah, cause I don't want to smell. I'm sure that was just one of many reasons. Oh gosh. I could name, look, he was, I'm going to be honest. I liked smoking. I liked the demon. The demon was cool. The mm-hmm. demon and I, the, when my nervous system, and we know what's stupid is because you know it hypes your nervous system up. But this is some bullshit we tell ourselves. It's because I'm nervous. <laughs> I need to have a cigarette. No offense to those who do smoke. But for me, I liked it. My grandpa, I remember him rolling cigarettes when I was like a child. And um, it, it was like the cool thing to do. It wasn't mm-hmm. my, but nobody in my household smoked. Of course not. I'm the black sheep. <laughs> we're just but finding yeah. a new way to appreciate the black sheep that's all you know what the black the black sheep means the way changer that means yeah. that you are the one here that has been asked to step up stand up and damn it plant those feet in the ground and let's start moving forward we have some work to do we have some work to do and all it requires is that we talk and we can do it we made a reference earlier to uh, high school and and people still acting like they're in high school and so forth. But one of the things that I remember about uh, the education years, the school years, is that there were there were the A students, the B students, the C students, so on and so forth. And I remember I, I was a, a B-plus student. If I wanted to be an A student, I could, but I never really wanted to be. But I remember the A students. I remember the C students and so forth. And later on, as I began to question the educational system, I started also questioning you know, how I thought about people who were in each of those different ratings groups. And I recognized something that kind of surprised me. I didn't follow what happened with most of my classmates, but I was aware of a few of them. And it was amazing to me how the A students were the ones who didn't get very far. Hmm. The C students got further in many cases than the A students did. What do you think that is? I think it's the, the phenomenon you were just referring to, the black sheep phenomenon. Oh, yeah. The black sheep phenomenon is, is really, it's, it's us that, that know, that weren't willing to settle that, that yeah. just on like, oh, what you're telling me is the honest, that's the, the only truth and no truth. I, and that's it. We're like, yeah, no, it doesn't sound right. Joe Rogan does the most hilarious thing about talking about Noah's Ark and he's like, no, no, that cannot be that two of every animal went in, we, you know, <laughs> how the hell? It was and one heck of a chip. <laughs> but then he says, he goes, don't, don't, don't animals eat other animals. Mm, that's also a problem. Yeah. And, and don't some animals eat humans. Pretty sure that may not have happened, even though most of the stuff is actually put, it's, it's more of a metaphor always. But the, I <laughs> get off on these tangents. But that's what we <laughs> love about you. That's the Debbie G energy. <laughs> it's these tangents I get on. Bottom, bottom line is we're here to be a way changer. We're here to do it a little bit differently and help others see that it's okay to do it a little differently, that you're going to be all right, no matter what it is. Those decisions we call hard decisions are simply you not really wanting to do it anyway, so stop making it a hard decision. A decision that's easy to make is just because, just make the damn decision. Make it. But I don't know, because if I do it this way, then this could happen, and that way, and this could happen, and it's like, yeah, you could do it either one of those ways, and neither one of those ways could happen, because our decisions guarantee not one, not one outcome. Period. So why not make the decision that feels good in your soul without the idea that you need to be married to what the outcome needs to look like? Cause it's going to happen the way it's going to happen. doesn't matter. You could do a or B you're still gonna, cause look, you, and we could argue this cause there's, there's sensible arguments to that. But if you really sit back and think about it, what outcome has ever been guaranteed Nine. except for, except for dying. I'm not even sure I'd count on that one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, no, nah, I don't know. I haven't. I, I've gotten to the point now where I'm pretty sure that everything is created by all of us. And I don't mean just humans. I mean, like, by all of us. So is there anything that is off the table at that point? 
I, I, I'm not sure there is. <sighs> I don't think so. I think we are, I think, uh, Everything's on the table and Leon Hendricks, I keep, I've referenced this a lot and I have this recording in my phone because it's cool. He says, you know, everything's real. Mm. Everything is real. He's been around before TV was ever uh, a thing. And I mean, honestly, like the Twilight Zone, Jetsons, y'all, just think about it. <laughs> sit back, sit back and you know what? I have a Roomba in the other room called Rosie. Yeah, right. That's basically right. what that is. Yeah. She's vacuuming and cleaning for me. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Everything's I'm th- possible. I'm, I'm thinking about w- what this show started off as and what, what it has transitioned into. And it's a great metaphor all by itself for how we grow. Because you were outlining at the very beginning of the show the pain and the agony you were going through. And over the the course of the show after spending quite a bit of time on that, we began transitioning, 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 using some of the tools that we all know, you know, challenging each other on certain things and so forth. And look where we are now. We we are so far away from the pain and the angst and the frustration that you were talking about, that you were going through. That was very real, very, very real that you were going through. And look look how far away we are from it right now. That's to me, it's like a microcosm of the growth that everybody who is consciously on this path is doing. And even those who aren't consciously on it, <laughs> much to their surprise, they're going to find out in a few years. Wow. I was on that path too. Yeah. We're, we're all doing this, this transition thing. And, and I mentioned this because I think it's helpful. Anytime that we find ourselves on the wrong side of the polarity and by the wrong side, I mean the side that we don't want to be on. Anytime we find ourselves on that side, if we can remember, you know, stories like this one, if we can remember situations where, you know, crap was happening and it turned into joy over time. Then we, we have a real world reminder right in front of us that helps us make that shift within the experience that we're having at that time. Cause that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to learn how to make the shift quicker and more easily and, and, and with less effort and with less stress and so forth. And that's what we're learning. Yeah. Well, we're, we're putting our, we're jumping in into the water. A lot of people are still tipping their toes in, and we told yep. them, don't tip your toes in. If you tip your toes in, you're not going to want to jump in. I'm telling you, you're <laughs> just not going to want to do that. You just want to jump in, and they're like, oh, no, I got to just I, – I need to do it my way. I'm just going to wade myself in, and then they get in, and they're just like, ah, and then they run back. We're here to be the ones that jump into the deep end and say, that's how it's done, son, and let's do some more of that. That's what we do. We show up. And that's just pretty much what I feel that you just were saying. It's like – that's it. We, 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 the, so, yeah. We were talking about it yesterday with, uh, with David, David Strickle. Um, and I mentioned that when David was on the show in September, he had talked about at that point how he had been living in such a high vibe place for so long and had really mastered the tire practice and really mastered the whole thing. It had gotten to the point where life was boring. Yeah. He, actually said, he actually said that on the show. Oh, did he? He actually said that on the show. He said, I, I, I'm now like dipping my toe into that contrast again and, <laughs> and look what happens he and he said it yesterday he he summarized he says look what happened three months later dipping my toe turns into my house burning down so even even if you do dip your toe in guess what you're going into the deep end you don't have a whole lot of choice about it. it's going to happen well if you're here's why here's why because when you you're going to be like i am you're going to be tipping your dough you're going to be tipping your toe in and then all of a sudden, trying to get that perfect shot, and the wave's going to come over and just rip you yeah, up. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and well, I saved the camera though because I've told that story. I still, I still save the camera. But you're right. You could be dipping your toe. You may get slammed with some water. I got a lot of laughter out of that. That was my my great experience. But <laughs> I want to thank you, Jeffrey, for showing up today. And I'm like a rainbow sheep too. I'm going to be a rainbow sheep. He's a rainbow sheep. You want to be a rainbow sheep? Sure. I like rainbows. Let's go. go We're going to be a rainbow sheep. I think so. All right. Well, we have definitely went well over the hour. Well, that's what we normally do. That's our practice, right? You know, we'll do it again tomorrow because tomorrow is the normal Friday. This is like the pre-Friday. You know, you you, you were doing with a parathyroid. We were doing with a para-Friday. And then tomorrow is the actual Friday. So so it's the Friday behind the Friday. And then we have the Friday. Yep. Yep. So we will see you all tomorrow. And do you have a, is there a guest tomorrow? There is a guest tomorrow. I don't remember what his name is, but he's cool. 
So right. that, that's all you need to know. <laughs> no, the no name cool guest. Join us here tomorrow. Hey, hey, it's always a good show around here. It will always be totally. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. Yeah. So thank you guys much. Thank you for podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.